I've been pretty far from home at times in my life. I don't know about you guys. But yeah, I've been pretty far from home. Home's heaven, right? We're pretty far away, but not too far away. Because every step takes us closer. Every single step takes us closer to Jesus. No matter how far we are, no matter how far we run, His love is running after us, right? And He's accepting of us. No matter where we are, He's accepting of us. Look at Him. He's got His arms out, walking on the water. You know, we can all do the same thing, walk on water to Him and then into the ship of faith that goes to the other side. Right? The promised land. Ship of faith, because it takes faith to walk on water. It takes faith to love him back. It takes faith to make it through the storm, right? Because life is like a storm sometimes. You can just feel the wind blowing. You can feel the waves crashing. You know, sometimes it seems like you're going to sink, right? I know I felt like I've been sinking many times in my life. I felt like I was going to sink. But uh, you know, there was His love. There was His acceptance. Praise God. Yes. So let's kick it off. we got some scriptures here. Let me start with an opening prayer. Prepare everybody. Prepare myself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this precious time that we have while we wait for Your return, which is near, very near. Prepare every mind, every heart for what you have to say to us this day, Lord Jesus. And I know you've already prepared me. So just use me, Lord Jesus. Help me be your good and faithful servant. And do everything you want me to do. Say everything you want me to say. And think everything you want me to think. And I pray the very same for every soldier who's sitting here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Proverbs 22, verse 1 says... In Spanish, de más, estima es el buen nombre de que las muchas riquezas. Riquezas are riches, right? Y la buena fama más que la plata y el oro. So it means that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So what's the best name? What's the name above every other name? Jesus. Jesus. So... A good name is rather to be chosen. So we choose what? Jesus. Jesus. We choose the name above every other name with our actions, our words, and our thoughts. Right? And so, loving favor, who's the one that loves us more than anybody? Jesus. Jesus. He's the one that gives us more favor than anybody, right? I had a dream last week and I, you know, I met this lady and she was with this guy named Favor and I knew right away that was Jesus that she was friends with he's our best friend right we're the bride that lady represents us and Favor represents Jesus because he's going to give you favor in every area of your life when you trust him with every area of your life. Every area of your life will have favor when you trust it to Him. And so, <clears throat> we choose Him all day long, every day. Praise God. We choose the good name. We choose loving favor. Right? Let's see the next one. First Samuel 17, 15. Pero David había ido y vuelto dejando a Saúl para apacentar las ovejas de su padre en Belén. And so in the authorized King James it says, But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So, now Saul, he was a wicked king, wasn't he? Disobedient. Doing his own thing all the time. Who does that? Everybody out there. Most people, right? Not us. No, we're saved. We're obedient, good, faithful servants. We don't do our own thing now. We do Jesus' thing. We choose Him. But the wicked king represents the enemy. You guys know who the enemy is, right? The true enemy. Yeah, the devil. Yeah. So, 
David represents us in this verse. We returned from the wicked king. We left him, right? And we went to feed our father's sheep. Who are our father's sheep? Brothers and sisters in Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Here, we're here to feed each other, folks. God is going to feed you some word for me and everybody else. He's feeding me right now the word that y'all need to hear. Praise God. I'm not the only preacher here. You guys are all preachers too. We're all to preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is Jesus Christ. We're here to demonstrate Jesus' love to everybody and then give a testimony about where we got that love. What's the hope of our faith? Him. We're here to testify to Jesus Christ. You know, Dad and I were studying the book of James this morning. I'll show you all later. We are the testimony of His creation. The living testimony of His creation. So, you know, the devil, Saul represents the wicked king, the devil, right? And the people of God represent his father's sheep. What about Bethlehem? What does Bethlehem represent here, folks? What do you think? Anybody getting a word from God? Bethlehem, the name, the name Bethlehem means the city of David. The city of David. Our city is our church, our territory. You're right, Luann. It's our territory that God's given us. The oikos, all the souls that we're supposed to steal back from the devil by preaching the gospel. That's our city that we're going to have in heaven, right? It's our city, praise God. You each have a city in heaven full of riches. Souls, right? We're going to steal those riches back from the devil. He thinks he's the richest and he wants to be richer. Why do you think evil's growing and growing and growing and more demons are being created every day with abortions, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's building his army. You know, he's going to declare war on the human race openly pretty soon. You know, he's already done it through many, many things. Which I can't really mention on camera, but if you want to see me later, I'll tell you. But anyways, Bethlehem's our city, our territory. Praise God. And let's see what else we got. 1 Samuel 17.25 Y cada uno de los de Israel decía, No habéis visto aquel hombre que ha salido. Él se adelanta para provocar a Israel. Al que le venciere, el rey le enrique será con grandes riquezas y le dará a su hija y eximirá de tributos a la casa de su padre en Israel. In English, that means, and the men of Israel said, this, you guys have read the story of David and Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is from the story of David and Goliath, which I got to hear again yesterday from a whole different perspective. It was a blessing, folks. I recommend y'all read it again if you get a, time, a chance. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? That's what the devil does all day long. He comes up and comes up and comes up in our lives where he doesn't belong. But he's allowed because he's proven us. We're being proven. We're proven that we love Jesus. Proven that we can stick to it. That we have a commitment to him. That we're committed. That we're actually married. You know? For life until death do us part. Right? And even then we're not going to part because it's eternity. We're proving that we're committed. Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. This is a great story, folks. And if you look at it, Israel is the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's us. The kingdom of heaven is within you, Jesus said. Right? We're the kingdom of heaven. Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's at hand. Just like in the day of Jesus and the day of John the Baptist at hand. We live in very interesting times. Very interesting times. Because we're raising up an army for God. We are the army of God. <clears throat> so, Israel's the kingdom of heaven. Who killed the devil? Who defeated the devil? Jesus. Jesus! The man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches. Remember what we talked about? What are the riches? Souls. Soul. Who do we belong to? Jesus. He's the richest. The devil thinks he's the richest. 
But see, Jesus, he's got the good souls. The devil just gets junk, right? The ones that don't believe, the ones that deny and disobey and rebel, right? He gets junk, but God gets the good stuff. You guys are good stuff, right? Yeah, we're the best there is. Because he doesn't make mistakes, folks. Yeah. So, his daughter, that's, you know, and if you look in the book in the Old Testament, when they talk about the daughter, they're talking about Israel. They're talking about Israel, which is the family of Abraham. Now, Abraham's called the father of nations, but he's also called the father of what? What else? In Hebrews chapter 11, the book, of, the book on what? Faith. Mm-hmm. The, the father of faith. Because it was counted unto him as righteousness because of his faith. And so all the children of faith, that's you, that's me, are part of Israel, the nation of faith. Right? So, and so heaven is open and free to all those who choose to serve. And so his father's house is free in Israel. Right? The kingdom of heaven. That's you, that's me. We're the family of faith. So it's a free place. Free to live there forever. Yeah. But down there, you got to pay a price. Right? <laughs> you got you to pay rent forever. <laughs> How'd you like to do that? No thanks. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyways, the next one is, uh, oh, wait, no, the next, yeah, Santiago, or James, chapter 1, verses 25 to 27. Más el que mira atentamente en la perfecta ley, la de la libertad. Y persevera en ella, no siendo oidor olivadizo, sino hacedor de la obra. Este será bienaventurado en lo que hace. I hope you guys don't mind I'm doing this in two languages because we have a lot of folks that only speak Spanish that love Jesus. And I want to reach them. And there's coming, there's more and more and more and more and more coming to this country. And this is Heart of Faith USA, not Heart of Faith English only, right? Heart of Faith USA, and the other main language in the USA is Spanish. So, thanks for y'all's patience as we get to the word. Si alguno se cree religioso entre vosotros y no refrena su lengua, sino el que engaña su corazón, la religión del tal es vana. La religión pura y sin mácula delante de Dios, el Padre, es esta, es esta. Visitar a los huérfanos y las viudas en sus tribulaciones, y guardase sin mancha del mundo. And so in English, out of the King James, it says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What's the perfect law of liberty? Jesus, the Word of God. He's the living Word of God, but we have the written Word of God that we can actually see and feel and read and study and meditate on. That's Him in visible form, right? The perfect law of liberty. And so when we look into the perfect law of liberty, we study it, we try to find what's hidden in there by God, because it's hidden because the ones that don't believe, He doesn't want them to find it. It's only, it's treasure for us only, only for His people. Whoever look into it, looks into it and continues therein, we have to continue to study because every time we read it, it's going to have something new for us. So we got to be in there all day long. He being not a forgetful hearer or a deceiver, because when they forget, they end up deceiving, but a doer of the work. That's what we just talked about. We're all doers of the work. Doers of the word, the work of God. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So many people are self-righteous. They don't, they don't know what they're doing because they don't have Jesus in their heart. They deceive their own heart with lies. They have lies in their heart. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So again, we have to have the interpretation. So, 
fatherless, the fatherless, are the bastards of whoredoms, whose father is the devil. The fatherless. They have no father because they don't have a relationship with God. They're lost. They're fatherless. We have to visit them with the Word of God, with the Gospel. That's why I'm going to campus this week. We did it a collection. I'll, I'll get it from y'all when, when we're done. But uh, we're starting a campus ministry at Texas State. And so we visit the fatherless. And we visit the widows. Now the widows, God showed me, are those who have not yet married Jesus. Right? All of us have to marry Jesus to make it to the promised land. We're going to have the wedding supper of the Lamb and then the thousand year reign and then celebration, right? But you have to marry Him first. And so the widows, they don't have a husband. They need a husband. We all need a husband. We all need to be led. We're as sheep gone astray, is what Jesus said, right? Or what the Bible says. We're all as sheep gone astray. If we follow our heart, our heart's evil and wicked. We're going to end up going the wrong way down there. We've got to follow Him. He's good. He's the only one that's good. Jesus said, there's none good but one, that is God. We have a song here called Jesus Will Come, which came to me this morning. God promised me an album, a second album. I already have one. And that got stolen by my producer. And uh, he's gonna, he mutilated all my melodies. He's going to put them out as his own. But, you know, God gives us the good stuff. And so the first album that, I, that he gave me is going to come out soon, too. Once my producer comes on, my true producer, the God-given producer, comes on board. But that's what happens when you're looking for something. You're not going to get what God has for you. You know, if you go looking for something, you got to wait till He brings it to you. That's what happened with my first two wives, with my producer, with a lot of things in my life. A lot of things in my life. I wasn't looking. You got to wait on God for Him to give you, bring you. What do you want you to have? He'll give you the desires of your heart when you delight in Him. Unexpectedly, most times. Unexpectedly, most times. The desires of your heart. Who lives in our heart? Are His desires. His desires that He gives you. Because you're one with Him. So His desires become your desires. And then He gives them to you. When you delight in Him all the time. Anyway, let's sing the song here. It's uh, pretty simple. This is the Beatitudes put to a song. And this was written for a little girl named Melanie who um, sang joy, 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 joy down in my heart. She sang that for me yesterday without me even having to ask. She knew I needed to hear that song. So God wrote this for her through me this morning about five in the morning because... She needed to be rewarded for being obedient to Jesus, right? So, and she needs to know the Beatitudes, and she has trouble memorizing spoken words, but the, the music just goes right into her heart and stays. So, here we go for Melanie. The poor get heaven, the rich get hell, the sad get comfort, the sick get well. God lifts the humble, resists the proud. He fills the hungry, comes in a cloud. Jesus will come for His people. We are the ones that He chose. We shall get stronger and stronger as the War comes to a close. The meek and quiet shall have the earth. The pure in heart get to see God first. When we make peace, we're God's holy child. His precious blood makes us reconciled. Jesus will come for His people. We are the ones that He chose. We shall get stronger and stronger as the war comes to a close. 
When others hate us, we won't attack. We trust in Jesus, he shields our back. We do and teach everything God says. We live for him every single day. Jesus will come for his people. We are the ones that he chose. We shall get stronger and stronger as the war comes to a close. We love all people and hate the dark. We stand for truth as the world gets marked. Our husband Jesus stand by our side as he comes for us, his chosen bride. Jesus will come for his people. We are the ones that he chose. We shall get stronger and stronger as the war comes to a close. Jesus, now come for your people. We are the ones that you chose. We shall get stronger and stronger as this war comes to a close. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, deliverance from affliction. God show me the past couple days that you know we either choose to, to obey and serve the great I am or the puny cowardly I fear, right? God or the devil, right? It's one or the other, folks. There's no in-between. So, <clears throat> you know, as the number and the intensity of the afflictions against this ministry that God created for us, the army of God's truly good and faithful servants, as it grows, so does the power that rests within us and the intimacy that we get with Jesus as we become more and more obedient and we learn more and more of His truth that he has for us. And so, also will the support for each other within his body, because we're one body but many parts. And from Jesus is also going to grow. The support we get from him is going to grow as we get more unified in this war that we're in the middle of. And so, so shall our dependence on Jesus grow through the afflictions, through the persecutions. We're going to have to lean on him more and more and more. And so as our walk in the Spirit gets more tight and straight and focused, what's going to happen is we're going to receive more peace. We're going to receive more peace from Him. And we'll get more confidence in Him. More boldness to take more territory for Jesus. Right? And our cities will grow. Right? Our city's full of riches. Because you guys are all rich. I'm looking at some rich people. Because all our inheritances were established before the foundation of the world. God already knows what you're about to inherit. We don't know because, you know, we're creations. He's the creator. He knows everything. We have limited minds. You know, so one other thing that's going to happen is when you go through afflictions, when you go through persecutions, when you go through oppressions, He gets glory, right? He gets glory. But He also glorifies us. In many ways. Just last night, my mom can testify to this and Anastasia can testify to this. I was on the phone with Anastasia reading through the book of Daniel to learn some prophecy, some truths that I'm going to talk to you all about after we're offline. Um, and, I, you know, iPhones have itty bitty puny little batteries. You know, just like the puny cowardly I fear the devil, right? puny batteries, so they don't last very long. But I was on the phone for four hours, and after about two and a half hours, it hit 15%. I looked at it, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to run out of battery. She looked at her phone too, and she said, oh, I'm going to run out of battery. An hour and a half later, 15%. 15%. Yep, and hers was probably the same, right? Yeah, right exactly where it was. Right exactly where it was. The whole time. God was powering those phones. Because He can do anything. He can do whatever He wants when we just trust in Him. He wanted us to learn what we learned from the book of Daniel, from the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Daniel 9 through 11, Matthew chapter 24 has some serious news for us, folks. We're going to get into that after the sermon. 
But anyways, we choose to obey or serve the great I am instead of, or the puny cowardly I fear. And so persecutions against Jesus, when we're persecuted, it's really Jesus they're persecuting, not us. Persecutions against Jesus all happen so that God's will in every, everyone's life may be done. Because we're here to execute His will. He makes the decisions. We execute the decisions. Just like in any marriage. The man makes the decisions. The wife implements the decisions, right? That's how it should always work. And <clears throat> anyways, we're here to make His decisions happen. So that, and so the persecutions happen so His will can be done. And so the truth about deliverance from the lies of the devil and the persecutions and the oppression can be known to the ends of the earth in order to truly free God's beloved people. We're here to give testimonies so we can learn from each other about how to overcome. How to overcome. That's why I started giving my testimony two months ago in these, these meetings that we have here. Because you all can learn from that and be victorious in every area of your life. Because remember, we have favor in every area of our life and victory in every area of our life. There's 11 crowns you can earn from Jesus. And one of them is victory. Another one's blessing. When you tr truly are a blessing to others, you're continuously a blessing. I mean, I've, I've earned those two crowns, victory and blessedness. And if anybody wants to learn about the other crowns, you can see me offline. But, you know, that's why he allows the persecutions. You know, so we choose freedom by believing and living in God's truths, or we choose bondage to lies and darkness. That's a choice. You know, so either God gives us the mind of Christ... Or we call him a liar with our thoughts and our words and actions. We have to believe everything that's in the Bible. And anything we believe that's not consistent with his word is a lie. And when we believe lies, we get demonized every time. You know, we start doing things that we normally don't do because we're being controlled by the lie that we believed. So, 1 John chapter 1, verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, the, the reason why we're sinning here is because Romans 14, 23b says, what, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So either we have faith that God can deliver us out of our afflictions, or we do not. When we take actions that are inconsistent with His will for us, but anyways, when we don't have faith that He's going to deliver us, we believe lies and we get demonized. We sin. We make Him a liar. And His Word is not in us because we deny the truth. So, anytime God says something to you about an affliction you're going through, trouble that you're going through, and you have fear, you got to spank that fear out of your mind. Rebuke it. Say that, you know, get behind me, Satan. Get hence. you got to kick his butt. We're here to kick some devil butt, folks. Yeah, that's what we're here for. So, kick those lies out of your mind. Bring every thought into obedience to the mind of Christ. He gives you His mind. You've got to obey Him to maintain it in every area of your life. There's no exceptions. Anytime you make an exception, you think, oh, maybe I don't need to pay attention to Jesus about this little thing. He's not going to really mind if I don't obey Him here. You can't get away with anything when it comes to Jesus. He knows everything. Because He made us. You think you're going to get away with it? You'll get demonized. And they'll spank you back into obedience every time. Because He chastises them whom He loves. Every single one of us gets spanked. And He loves everybody. Even the ones that, that disobey continuously. They have negative stuff happening to them all the time. But they love it. They love that stuff. That's what they're made for. Evil. Right? We're made for good. We love good stuff. The evil ones love evil stuff. Because there's two kinds of children. Obedient and disobedient. Two kinds of servants. Faithful, good, obedient ones. Disrespectful, disobedient, rebellious ones. Right? We're obedient, I hope. I hope everybody here is a faithful, obedient, good servant. <laughs> I know I am. No doubt about that. I've been walking with him 18 years without, a, without a, you know, without pausing. But I've disobeyed. You know, I've just out of ignorance. You know, he's had to show me some things, a lot of things. 
lot of things because I was just ignorant. I had some bad habits too that he had to spank me out of. <laughs> you know, and he's still working on that. That's why we're here about acceptance because God showed me I had some issues, some acceptance issues. You know, I had problems accepting people for where they were and who they were. He accepts us for who we are and right where we are. So he showed me, you know, showed me, you just got to accept people you know, for who they are. Because everybody's in a different place in their walk with Jesus. And we're all unique. He made us all fearfully and wonderfully. And it took an eternity to make each one of us. That's why we have eternal life, right? It takes eternity to give him proper thanks. Right? For everything he's doing. Everything he's done and everything he will do. Because I believe in heaven. He's still going to do stuff for us. We're going to party. We're going to have rest and play. But... He'll still be the hardest worker, I believe. He'll still be doing stuff. But it'll all be play because there'll no be no no more challenges, no more evil, no more resistance to the truth. It's all going to be obedience and truth, faithfulness, joy, peace, love, goodness, gentleness, all the good stuff, right? Fruits of the spirit. So, you know, the world calls my actions as well as, the, as those of God bipolar. You know. The world thinks I'm bipolar. But I am just as bipolar as God is. Because God, He gives grace to the humble and He resists the proud. And so do I. Because I'm godly. You know, I'm living godly in Christ Jesus. And that's why I get persecuted. The Bible says all those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And that's why I talked about the mental prisons earlier. You know, That was my main persecution for a long time. And he put me in mental prison ten times. You know? But this time they tried to do it, he said, that's enough. I, he's in ministry now. You're not going to touch him. I'm not going to touch him anymore. So. But I learned about what they do in those places so I could help those who are in prison. So that's the second ministry we're going to form. The first one is the campus ministry, then mental prison ministry. Praise God. We're going to rescue the souls from the mental prisons, from the oppressions, the poison. The, the addictions that they cause. <clears throat> but, let's continue. So, God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. So, are you of the world or of the truth? Are you of in darkness or in God's marvelous light? Is your eye single or evil? Is the word of God true? Or does he lie when his word says that the name of Jesus through faith in the name of Jesus can make a person completely well? Perfectly sound. A lot of people believe falsely that the miracle stopped after the apostles, after the initial church, after the apostles all died, right? Fly from the devil. We got the same power they did. Same anointings. Same gifts. No different. God doesn't change. Why should we? It's all the same. Everything's been done. There's nothing new under the sun. That's what Solomon wrote, right? Nothing new. Nothing new. You just got to learn. Be sober and vigilant. We're not ignorant to the devil's devices. Ignorant of the devil's devices. So here's the proof right here. And his name, this is from the lame person that was lame from birth. You know, and they walked up to him and said, Silver and gold have I not. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. We've got to rise up and walk. Rise up from our afflictions. Rise up from our oppressions. Rise up from our persecutions. And walk the walk that God has us to walk. Walk all the way to Him. In the flesh. In His new body, right? He's glorified. He's been glorified. We're all going to get glorified too. We'll get our glorified bodies. Not too long from now. So anyways, his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. God loves witnesses. That's why my battery was stayed at 15%. Her battery stayed where it was. There were witnesses to the miracle. 
God loves to be glorified. When you give Him the glory, He rewards you, right? Yeah, amen. So, are you obeying and serving the great I Am? The great, powerful, almighty, unstoppable I Am? Or are you serving the puny cowardly I Fear? <laughs> I laugh in the face of fear. You guys should too. There's nothing to fear. He's with us. He's with us at all times. There's nothing to fear. Fire, storms, mental prison, real prison, beheading, whatever. They can do whatever they want. They're not going to keep me away from Jesus. Nothing they can do to keep me away from Jesus. So, you know, wake up. If you're not already in full-time service, you better get into service. Because the only way you get intimacy is through service. It's the only way. Only way. 24 by 7 by 365, service, work. There's no rest for a true soldier. It's all work. It's all work. And he'll sustain you. And Anastasia and I were talking about this, you know. They shall rise up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not get tired, right? God will sustain you when you're serving Him. You'll do some things you didn't think you could do. And that's what He has for us to do. The work of Jesus. Yeah. So, anyways, enter full-time service. Start living in freedom and truth and joy and peace with God. The only way to have peace with God is for Him to be with you. And the only way for Him to be with you is when you're obeying Him, serving Him. You're in service. You're in the service, the army. Right? So there's a false belief out there that I ran into a couple weeks ago that Jesus went to Sheol instead of hell. Wait, wait. Sheol, something called Sheol. It's like a fake hell that some people believe in. Right? I'm going to show you all the truth in case you ever run into this lie of the devil that a lot of people believe. Go ahead. So Luke chapter 16 tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. You guys probably heard about this, right? The beggar and the rich man. There was a certain rich man who, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, there's a lot of wisdom in here that I can't get to because we don't have time. There's so many stories behind this story that will talk to your life. So I just recommend everybody get into this when you get some time. Study the Word, Luke chapter 16. Go ahead. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. When Jesus comes for us, if you read the Word, we're going to be carried by the angels. I can't wait to be carried by an angel. Meet an angel. That's going to be awesome, huh? Meet the angels. We're going to rule over the angels too because God showed me the hierarchy. You know, it's God the Son, God the Father. You've got three levels of faith. People, depending on their level of faith, then you've got the two types of angels. You know, so you've got all the, all the thrones in heaven. So, the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he left up his eyes. Not Sheol. Being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, in Abraham's bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. You know, I talked to someone about this already. The reason he wanted his tongue to be cooled is because in, the, in hell there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. People are just chewing on their tongue all day long because of all the pain. They can't control it. It's uncontrollable torment. It's your body's reaction to the torment. So he wanted his tongue to be cooled by the water. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. That's what's going to happen. The poor get heaven, the rich get hell. Right? If you're rich in the world, you can be rich in tar, in the tar pit forever. 
because all the stuff of this world becomes tar, just melts into the lake of fire. You get, you get to keep what you wanted to keep, right? But if you give it up, if you're willing to lose everything like Paul did, like I have several times, like many people who are serving Jesus have several times, you get heaven. You get the true riches. Yeah. It's stuff that lasts. It doesn't turn into tar and burn forever. <clears throat> so, beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So this is another case. I had a sermon Thursday that you can find online called Fellowship with God, where I talked about how not every scripture, the literal, you know, the literal interpretation is not always applicable. You know, sometimes a literal interpretation of a scripture doesn't make sense. And I showed a few examples in thir on Thursday's uh, sermon, but the words here, um, Abraham's bosom, represents the nation or body made up of all the children of faith. We've already talked about that. Faith, light, love, all the good stuff. Not Abraham the person, right? Abraham the nation. That's us. He was carried by the angels to the nation of Abraham. Faith, heaven. That's where our spirits live. You know, and we can see the proof here. You know, the word shield doesn't exist in the Bible. And the gulf described here, the gulf fixed, is the separation between the outer darkness of hell and the heavens. And those are separated by the firmament that God made. I believe on the second day, second day, right? He made the firmament of heaven that God created in the beginning. And so the proof, I think I might have it here. Let's see what we got next. No, not yet. Okay, we'll do the jokes in a minute. Anyways, the proof is in Genesis 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. The firmament separated the waters from the waters. You and I already talked about this, Jonathan, about the deep in the beginning. That's the well of souls. That's us. He made us before time was created. We're eternal beings, eternal creatures. So the deep that his spirit moved upon with compassion, because remember, darkness was on the face of the deep. That's evil, Satan, all the wicked stuff. We belong to evil, and God had compassion. Because remember, he, where does he call us out of into his marvelous light? Darkness. We started off in darkness, right? Yeah. But then he said, let there be light. And he divided the light from the darkness, or the light. Yeah. I mean, he separated, he divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And so, when God divided them, he was dividing the souls that were light from the souls that were darkness. We are the waters that are above the firmament. And those who are not of the truth, those who are of the lies, are those who are the waters that are below the firmament. Everybody got an understanding? Yes. What is the firmament? Heaven. Okay. Heaven. That's what God called it. Firmament. Yeah. yeah. That's the gulf fixed between outer darkness and the other heavens. Because remember, there's multiple. Jesus went beyond all the heavens. Remember Ephesians 4. We read that last week. Ephesians, I recommend you read that again. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> the rich man in the story... Jesus told was in hell, not in Sheol, as was Jesus after he died. We studied that a couple weeks ago. You know, if you want to see it online, it's the um, we have obtained faith, the greatest deliverance. And so now I have a Jesus rap called Room for You. Actually, two Jesus raps. Wrote these many years ago as God was preparing me for full-time ministry. As I did the first album and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let me tell you about a rich man whose sins are known quite well. He lied to God. He lied to man. He ended up in hell. He'd been warned a thousand times, was dying in his sins. His mama cried. His nanny tried. He knew much more than them. Now he's in the lake of fire with no one here to blame. 
He's got no home. He's got no friends to help share in his shame. He tries to seek forgiveness. He knows it's way too late. He will never see the streets of gold or enter heaven's gate. There stood Abram on a hill and Lazarus at his side. A drop of water for my tongue. It's fiery here, he cried. He begged, please send Lazarus up so he can warn the others. Send him to my father's house, for there I have five brothers. Sadly, Abram shook his head and said, they won't believe. There are Moses and the prophets. Still they cannot see. The rich man sadly hung his head. He knew the words were true. It is too late to save his soul, but not too late for you. To stay free of the streets of hell and from the lake of fire. Rebuke Satan from your life and flee earthly desire. Sometimes it's hard to live for Jesus. This I've learned quite well. You can spend forever with him or eternity in hell. Now you've heard the story, you should know that it is true. Hell is not quite full just yet. And there's plenty of room for you. So, we continue. Let me tell you about a stealer whose sins are known quite well. His crimes he hung for on a cross, but Christ saved him from hell. It was paradise he entered in, the moment of his death. The Lord of love became his Lord and gave to him the best of everything because he said, Remember me, my king. And because Jesus loved him, so he shared in everything. It was time for death, but he gave life before his time was through in order that in heaven there might be some room for you. <laughs> Praise God. There's room for us, folks. In either place, it all depends on your choices. Are you going to enter service and get roared with intimacy? Or are you just going to do your own thing? And then continue to do your own thing? It's up to you. But you're accepted either way. God accepts everybody He made. Right where they are. With whatever they're doing. Whatever choices they're making. They're all accepted by God. He loves us all. He gives us choice. The choices we make are up to us. The consequences are not. He chooses the consequences. And He shows us the consequences in the Bible. In black and white. Very clear. So, let's have a couple hell jokes. That was pretty heavy, huh? <laughs> Room for you in hell? No, not for me, not for you, not for you guys, right? There doesn't have to be any room for you in hell. You're going to make the right choices. Yeah. Service. 24 by 7 by 365. Service. Why do people say boring as hell? Hell's always lit. 24 by 7. <laughs> My spouse converted me to religion. I never believed in hell until I married her or him. Anybody been through a marriage like that? I've been through two of them. <laughs> oh, Dad? <laughs> well, that's because y'all hadn't served Jesus for so long, you know? <laughs> that's why. It's hell. When your spouse doesn't serve Jesus, it's nothing but a living hell. Yeah. And here's the proof here. 2 Corinthians 6 talks about this. Be ye not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness and what concord hath Christ with Belial Belial's you know one of the old idols fake gods that they all worshipped it's actually a demon probably or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel someone who has no faith and what agreement hath the temple of God that's our body with idols for ye are the temple of the living God God lives in us we're supposed to be holy, folks. You want to live in a filthy pigsty of a place? Jesus doesn't. No. He wants us to keep our house in order. The O in God is order. Yeah. we got to be in order, folks. <clears throat> As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Walk in them. Yeah. We're one. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, the infidels, the ones that curse us and persecute us and afflict us because they're darkness, we're light. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. 
and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Praise God. Sons and daughters. Adopted by the blood of Jesus. The price he paid. Adopted sons and daughters. We have a father. We're not bastards. We're, we're children. Proper, lawful, adopted children. Because of our faith. And because of what Jesus did. Yeah, and what he continues to do, praise God. Oh yeah, you are definitely accepted. Definitely accepted. Anybody feel questioned? Anybody question that? that whether you're accepted or not? Yeah. How do you know you're accepted? Faith. Yeah. Faith. Relationship with Jesus. Relationship. Once you know him, you'll truly know how accepted you are. No, truly no. Yeah, truly, truly no. Because when you're lost, you don't feel accepted. You feel rejected. You feel like you got no home. You feel like you got no future, no hope. You know? Because you really don't. When you're not walking with Jesus, there's no hope. Except for the tar pit. Yeah, that's your future. <clears throat> so I got a story. When I visited my brother's business last week, I met. A very, very special man. He was mean. He was wearing one of these little Mike Wachowski hats that says, "Okay, you know the green ones from Monsters Inc." <laughs> yeah, this is Mike the greatest. He, had, you know, he loved the kids. Yeah, he loved the kids. And I, I'll bet this person, who I'm hoping will come to church pretty soon, I'll bet he loves kids too. I know he does because he loves everybody. You know, he's the most accepting person I've ever met. And I knew that after just speaking with him for about a half hour. He blew my mind. You know, just blew my mind. You know, he received all the truth I gave him from the Word of God without question, with complete and total acceptance. You know, he was paying attention. And I realized after just a few minutes, I was dealing with another true soldier. True soldier of Jesus Christ. Person of the truth willing to receive and obey the truth. That's what we got to do. <laughs> it's not enough to hear it. you got to do it, right? So someone who is of the truth and able to handle an unlimited amount of truth, just like some of the rest of us. Right? So I know that we need to take a break here for a second. And everybody stand up. Let's stretch. And get ready for some more truth. Praise God. If you can stand... Let's stand up. I'm standing, so I'm not falling asleep. But we got to stand up, stretch, get ready for some more truth. Because Jesus wants to feed y'all till you're full. Praise God. Amen. All right. Anybody got a question? We can do stuff the past for a second. We did that a few weeks ago. All right. Gave you yeah, yeah. Hopefully, God gave you the right answers. <laughs> I'm not speaking, it's Jesus. You know, he lives in me. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm dead. You know, Frank Thor's dead. Only Jesus lives now. That's it. He's all there is. He's all that's left. So, anyways, not everyone who's of the truth can accept all of it. Just in the past few days in my new full-time ministry job, I've run into several people who resisted the truth when I spoke it to them. And most of the time, it was just mild resistance, just a little bit of disagreement. You know, it's easy to overcome that through prayer and by demonstrating love, true love, which Jesus gives us all the time. So we can demonstrate to each other true love. Everybody's looking for true love. There's only one way to find it, though. Only one way to find it. Yeah. Get to know Jesus. Get to know Jesus. But anyways... In one occasion, I ran into someone who was demonized because they falsely accused me in public. When you get falsely accused, you know someone's demonized. They're controlled by the devil. Because that's what he does all day long, falsely accuses us. He's a false accuser of the brethren. That's what he's called many, many times in the Bible. So when you get falsely accused, you know someone's being controlled by the devil. And you got to pray. you got to love them. You know, show them compassion and goodness. You got to overcome evil with good. So demonstrate the love of Jesus. You know we're gonna have to lift him up after the service. But back to the story. So as my friend and I got to talking, I found myself asking him if he could remember back to the most loving experience of his life. He paused for a long 
time. Thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. And then he told me a story about a time when he was in a very difficult situation. <clears throat> and he was with one of his friends. And he broke down, totally broke down in front of his friends. He couldn't control it. He just had not He was overwhelmed. And I know. I've felt overwhelmed at, overwhelmed at times. And I've had to break down. Totally break down and just give my heart to Jesus. Trust in Him that He's going to rescue me from the storm. Put me back on the ship of faith where all the other slaves are, right? <laughs> That's what we are, slaves, right? Praise God. But anyway, he broke down in front of one of his best friends and his friend comforted him. You know? Loved him, accepted him. I want you all to know, I love you unconditionally. I accept each and every one of you. Soldiers. Yeah. No matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter. I know you love Jesus. I know you're doing the best you can. He's going to make it better. Right, that's his job. We just do our best. That's all he expects. So, anyways, when he told me the story, I knew. I knew. He was just made up of acceptance, that person. And I hope he comes here soon. Because everybody needs to be accepted. You know, he's doing, I can tell he's been here a long time, a long time. But that's how Jesus loves us, right? By accepting us. And i got to thank Jonathan for helping me out with the next part of this. He showed me some scriptures here that, that I think will help you know how accepted you truly are. Go ahead, let's see. Let's see what we got. All right, Isaiah 64, verse 8. Ahora pues, Jehová, tú eres nuestro Padre. Nosotros barro y tú el que nos formaste. Así que obra de tus manos somos todos nosotros. But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father. We are the clay, and Thou art potter. And we are all the work of Thy hand. You think He's going to make something that He hates? That He doesn't accept? That He doesn't love? Yeah, He loves and accepts every one of us. Because He made us. He doesn't make mistakes. And God is love. That's what the Bible says, First John chapter 4. He's also light. That's what we're made of, light and love. He accepts every one of us. Let's see what else the Bible has to say. 1 Peter 2.9 Mas vosotros sois linaje escogido, real sacerdocio, nación santa, pueblo adquirido por Dios, para que anunciéis las virtudes de aquel que os llamó de las tinieblas y a su luz admirable. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a very peculiar people. That's what the world calls us, right? We're so peculiar because we won't do their evil deeds and call them good, right? <laughs> peculiar. That you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yeah, we started off in darkness. But now, now that we're walking with Him, we're in His marvelous light. He shines it everywhere we go. Because thy word, David said, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's why we've got to be in the word. In the word. And I praise my parents for being in the word today with me. You know, we learned a lot today. And anytime you get in the word, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. Yep. Let's see what else. Psalm 34.15 Los ojos de Jehová están sobre los justos y atentos sus oídos al clamor de ellos. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. He's paying attention to every one of us here. His ears are open, waiting for us to pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. So once you get to know Jesus more and more and more and more and more, and walk with him more and more and more and more and more, you're just going to be in an intimate conversation with Him all the time, just like I am, just like I've been for, I don't know how long, it's been a while, it's been a while. I forgot, I, I forgot about the time when I didn't have intimacy with Him, because I've had it for so long. It's just second nature now, and it will be for y'all too, if it isn't already. Second nature, it's just, yeah, you're just living. Christ is living, really, that's what's happening. You've died, you're dead. Christ is alive now. 
That's what happens. Once you become totally obedient, totally obedient, unquestioning, instantly responsive to commands, instant in prayer, and speaking prayer, because we're always thinking on Him, always focused on Him. But we got to be instant in our spoken word, our prayer language, when the battle heats up, when we sense the enemy. Because when we're sober and vigilant, we're always going to know before the devil does what he's up to. Because God knows before he does what he's up to. And God's going to tell us, and we're going to pray. And the devil will be spanked out of your life every time. Because he moves the mountains. All you got to do is speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Bye bye, mountains. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. Every time. So, just speak to the mountains, folks. Because his ears are open unto your cry. And he's always watching. Can't get away with anything, remember? Just obey. Serve. Get into service. Let's see what else we got. 2 Corinthians 1 20. Porque todas los, las promesas de Dios son, son en el sí y en el amén por medio de nosotros para la gloria de Dios for all the promises of God you think there's a promise he won't keep he's a promise keeper in him are yea and in him amen who do you think they're talking about in him Jesus Jesus holds the promise and releases the promise. He's favor, loving favor, right? That's the promise, the loving favor. Unto the glory of God, by us, we implement the will of the Father through prayer and obedience to our husband, Jesus Christ, who gives us commands, and we do them. All right, anything else? Let's see. 2 Peter 1, 4. Por medio de las cuales nos ha dado preciosas y grandísimas promesas, para que por ellas llegaseis a ser participantes de la naturaleza divina, habiendo huido de la corrupción que hay en el mundo a causa de la concupiscencia, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Anybody remember the three weapons the devil has against us? The three temptations Jesus had to go through? Remember what those were? Remember, anybody remember the first thing the devil said to Jesus when he was tempted of the devil? If thou be the Son of God. False accusation right away. Very first thing. That's what he does. Falsely accuses his brethren. Falsely accuses Jesus. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Right? It is written. It is written. Man shall live, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written. Jonathan gave me a good book today. Showed me some it is written that I hadn't memorized yet. Those can be in my heart pretty soon. You gotta have the word in your heart to be effective in spiritual warfare. Because every attack of the devil has a counterattack that neutralizes it. And it's all in the word. It's all in the word. You gotta know the word. You gotta speak the word. You gotta pray the word. You gotta live the word to be victorious. So we've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Lust of the flesh is what we're talking about here, right? He was hungry. He hadn't eaten or drank anything for 40 days. Hungry. Turn these stones into bread. You won't be hungry anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do your own thing. Do your own thing, right? Feed yourself some food, some worldly food. Nah. We live on godly food, right? Primarily godly food. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. The Word of God. That's the main food. The Word of God. Get in the Word. The next one is lust of the eye. Lust of the eye is stuff you desire, that your body, your your mind desires. You know, the sparkly stuff, you know? Stuff that just looks pretty, you know? That, that Lamborghini or that Porsche, that Corvette, whatever, you know? The house that's just so beautiful. And all that worldly stuff that just, you know, 
doesn't attract me anymore. You know, I know where I'm headed. I know where my riches are, but you know, I could use a house. Yeah, I'm poor. You know, I'm driving a beat-up pickup truck. I got no, no place to live, really, except for my parents, the grace of God. You know, I'm a brother. House and beauty that I stay at. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not about what you can obtain on earth, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. But the third weapon is the most insidious. Anybody remember what that is? The pride of life. The pride of life. Yeah, temptation to do things your own way. Or give in to fear and do things the cowardly way. The cowardly way. The devil's way. He's the coward. That's why he flees when you resist him every time. Because he's full of fear. He knows he's a defeated foe. When you stand up to him, he runs. Because he's scared of Jesus. And Jesus is who lives in us. He's terrified of Jesus. So are the demons. They shake and tremble. Shake and tremble. Run! While you still can. Yeah. So we've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh. You know, the only thing left is pride of life. Temptation to do stuff that's not God's will. Which as you get to know Jesus more and more, you're going to know His voice. You're going to know what His will is. You're going to know the thoughts that He puts in your head. You know, you have the mind of Christ. You can have the mind of Christ. And the thoughts that come from the devil, you're just going to know. They're just not, not good. You know, there's lies. Evil. You know, just, you don't even pay attention after a while. Once you've had the mind of Christ for a while, you just live in the truth, live in the light. You know, and, you know, every once in a while the devil will raise his head and you'll have to rebuke him, speak some truth, and the Word of God, and he'll run again. It just keeps coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. That's what he's made to do, right? Made to come at us, to test our faith. <clears throat> but, you know, they don't give in to fear. Let's see what else we got. Let's see. I think this might. No, one more. All right. Deuteronomy 7 6. Por qué tú eres pueblo santo para Jehová tu, al tu Dios? Jehová tu Dios te ha escogido para ser en un pueblo especial, más que todos los pueblos que están sobre la tierra. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. If you had enough faith to come here and hear some pretty tough truths, you're in his chosen people. If you haven't left yet, you're his chosen people. If you were of the devil, you would have run a long time ago. You would have run away like a coward. But no. Real soldiers get motivated by the truth. Right? Get lifted up by the truth. Yeah. Get encouraged by the truth. Exhorted by the truth. More powerful when they hear the truth. Yeah. I'm only going to feed y'all truth, folks. Because that's what you need to be fed. There's so many false teachers out there. But, you know, I'm hoping, hoping on every message I give. So far, I've looked at all of them. So far, I haven't found, you know, any issues. So hopefully, God will stay with me and I'll stay obedient and keep saying what He wants me to say instead of what I want to say. Right? So, we're above all people that are upon the face of the earth you know, because He's chosen us to be a special people unto Himself chosen us chosen us he made a choice and then we made the choice back right because we love him just as much as he loves us as much as we can he loves us way more but you know we try we try to love him as much it's impossible but, you know, we try try to love him. try to love him try to respect him try to obey him try to serve him Try to live for him. We all make mistakes. But he accepts us. He accepts us. You're accepted. Because you're trying your best. Trying your best. Getting rid of the old lies. Getting rid of the old habits. As he spanks you into submission, you know, and shows you these different areas that need correction. 
usually out of the Word of God. But we're an obedient people, so we're going to correct the mistakes. We're going to get back in line. Go ahead. All right. Ephesians 3, 6 in Spanish. Bendito sea el Dios y Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que nos bendijo con toda bendición espiritual en los lugares celestiales en Cristo. Según nos escogió en el antes de la fundación del mundo, para que pues, fuésemos santos y san manchas delante de él, en amor habiéndonos predestinado para ser adoptados hijos suyos por medio de Jesucristo, según el puro afecto de su voluntad, para alabanza de la gloria y de su gracia, con la cual nos hizo aceptos en el amado. This is the meaning of the message, folks. Go ahead. So, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. How many spiritual blessings did he bless us with? Oh. All. That means you're going to get all the gifts of the Spirit, right? You're going to get all the anointings. Just got to walk with him and wait. Exercise faith and patience. You'll get it all. All the blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. When did he choose us? Before, before the foundation. Yeah. Before time even started. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Jesus adopted us when he gave his life for, in exchange for ours. Our, you know, his, he died the death we should have died. You know, and he went to hell for three days and three nights. Burned off all the sin. Came back in glory. And like he's coming again pretty soon. <clears throat> to the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us... What's that word right there? <laughs> praise the Lord! Accepted! You're accepted! In the beloved. In the Beloved. The Beloved. The Beloved is Jesus Christ, right? The Most Beloved. <clears throat> beloved by the Father. Beloved by His children. The Most Beloved. Because He is the most loving. The most serving. The most sacrificing. The hardest working. Right? He's our everything. Praise God. I think we may have a song. Let's see. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Isn't it? Nothing sweeter. Nothing sweeter than trust in Jesus.